Welcome into today's Sports Stove Podcast, brought to you by Belly Up Sports, Blue Coolers, and Skull Candy. Today we have a very special guest with us. He is the commissioner of the A-Sun Conference, Ted Gumbert. Ted, thank you so much for being with us. No, my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Uh, we've had a good time talking here just before we hit record and uh, talking a little bit about the A-Sun, getting familiar with each other and everything as well. I'm located in central Kentucky and uh, just down the road from Eastern Kentucky University, which uh, just announced that they have become a part of the A-Sun. I assume that all goes into effect next next school year? Correct. Actually, the, the official date is July 1 of 2021. Uh, they will be you know, a member of the A-Sun Conference, uh, along with Central Arkansas and Jacksonville State. So big news we broke on Friday. Yeah, so three new schools coming in. And in the past, I think the your website said four years, you brought in three other schools, North Alabama, Liberty, and Bellarmine. So that's six new schools in what, the last four or five years? Oh, yeah, it's been great. And, you know, the biggest thing is just the environment changes and we have to add value to our members. That's, that's our job. And uh, so to find the best value, uh, our folks, sometimes they want to be eight and sometimes they want to be 10 and sometimes they want to be 12. It depends upon who the members are. I've been affiliated with the conference for nearly 30 years and the membership changes and the president's change and the athletics directors change. And so you have to constantly keep up with what they're looking for in their conference affiliation and try to deliver that. You know, obviously everybody wants the greatest value. And I'm like, all right, well, what, what, what do you value the most? And uh, certainly money is a good thing. Everybody likes to have, you know, lower costs and higher revenue. But the, uh, the ability to succeed really leads to a lot of those opportunities. And you mentioned Bellarmine. Uh, they have on their website, when we first started to get to know them, uh, they're in Louisville, and I had to learn how to pronounce Louisville. They said, just, you know, don't open your mouth and just mumble through, and that's the way it is. And so at the press conference, I said, well, we're pleased to be here in Louisville, and the mayor was right next to me. So I looked up, he said, no, 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 I, I mean Louisville. <laughs> and uh, so we had a good time with that. But Bellarmine, they've won six in a row. You know, they're for real. They're a good good school, but their basketball team is for real. And uh, we're really proud to have them. Louisville market's tremendous for, for college athletics. And so now to be a second team in the Commonwealth. And uh, they asked me on Friday's uh, interview session, did I think there'd be a rivalry between the two? And I said, well, the last football game I came to here was the Opportunity Bowl. And that was a lot of fun. And as I was driving out of the parking lot, the car in front of me had a Bellarmine sticker on it. So they're here already. Yes, it's going to be a rivalry. And it should be a good one. <laughs> and you, like you said, they made an immediate impact. Uh, they went out and played some pretty big schools right off the bat as well. And they held their own uh, in the early basketball season. And so far in your basketball, men's basketball season, those three schools, North Alabama, Liberty, and Bellarmine, are the top of your, your standings right now in the conference, so all of them having a major impact. What do these new schools, Central Arkansas, EKU, and Jacksonville State, what are they bringing to your conference? Well, Vince, the, it's it's nice. I did my dress rehearsals Friday to get ready for your uh, Sunday evening. And uh, if people can see, I'm just in my T-shirt. I wasn't, I was in coat and tie, got my guitar. Just holding it makes me feel better, even if I'm not playing it. And uh, I'll tell you that the thing that ties these three together and why it's a great fit for the A-Sun is one of the elements, and this was a couple of years in the study and development, is football. You know, people join a conference or leave a conference because they've either added football or dropped football or changing the level of their football. And we decided that two of our schools, four of them, you know, of our nine, uh, played football. Uh, Jacksonville was the fifth. They had dropped it last year. Stetson plays non-scholarship in, in the Pioneer Football League, and Liberty is uh, bowl-level independent. Uh, and so we had Kennesaw State in North Alabama that play in the Big South Conference because we had a football partnership with them that allowed our new members to play with the Big South. So that's something that's still possible, and our new schools could affiliate with the Big South. But our goal is really to build a new football conference. And once we centered around that, we said, well, we don't want to just have football. We want winning football. 
Uh, there's a big difference between football and winning football. And uh, the crowds come out <laughs> to see a winning football program. So it makes a difference. We said, look, the advantage we have is we don't have football. So we can go around and talk to people that might be interested in building something new. So Central Arkansas, you know, they recognized the Southland Conference was going to be shifting. Uh, Eastern Kentucky had aspirations and uh, actually, you know, played this fall. And they're not going to play with the OVC this this spring. And so they they had some just aspirations and wanted to build something new. And Jacksonville State is a former member of our conference. The only reason they left is because we didn't have football. So football is the thing that ties it all together. And certainly it's geography and the difference between what the A-Sun offers and what somebody else could offer really comes down to we're building something new. You've got to be willing to take a step forward. You've got to be willing to uh, say, look, I want to innovate. I want to be the, the first out there to do something new. And, you know, not everybody's a trailblazer. Uh, some people want to make sure everything is firm and built and then they'll come inspect it. And if it suits them, maybe they'll partner up. But but this group, the, the, the ASUN as a conference and these new members, uh, we share that. We're not afraid to try new things. We're not afraid to get out there and be first. And, and part of that is because of the size and scope of the conference, we're, we are nimble. If we need to adjust, we'll adjust. So anyway, that, that was part of it. And then no small uh, element is the commitment of the, you know, from the presidents on down. They have to agree, this helps my university. Because all three of those schools have a conference. So they made the choice to, to move to a new one. And I think that speaks very highly of their forward thinking. And that's what matches with us. You mentioned flexibility. This has been one of the most unique years when it comes to college athletics. Well, really the the country, <laughs> but uh, how have you been affected by the conference been affected by and what kind of stuff went into the changes and the flexibility you had to make with all the COVID things surrounding the uh, season and, and the schools themselves too? Yeah, the, the work began as soon as we stopped playing basketball last March. And so you start setting the framework that we decided to halt all athletic activity because of the dangers of spreading the coronavirus. So we began then and said, all right, part of our responsibility is to stop the spread of the virus. And so that was first. And then it was, okay, how can we get back to playing? Well, back to playing took a back seat for our institutions uh, to getting back to campus because a traditional college campus if it doesn't have students, then you're not using the dorms, you're not using the cafeteria, you're not using the classrooms, and uh, you've really changed the whole model of what you do in higher ed. So it quickly became about uh, safety and reopening the schools. So it was months uh, of work, and we, you know, we didn't lead that. We we listened and helped and said, "Look, we're not going to push athletics until we know you can." Uh, have students back on campus. So come the fall, uh, like most others, we delayed uh, athletic activity. And then, you know, early in the fall said, look, we're just not going to be able to do it safely and efficiently and really respect those that did. In fact, I, I had uh, a note drafted and haven't finished it to send to John Swafford, the commissioner of the ACC, to Greg Sankey, the commissioner of the SEC, and to Bob Bowlesby, the commissioner of the Big 12, because the three of them kept saying, we're taking it a step at a time. And they never canceled. They said, we'll delay. All right, we'll delay. We're studying. We're learning. And, you know, we're going to try. We're going to try later. We're going to try. And they just kept after it. And certainly the scope of uh, the financial implications of not playing football at that level are different than the A Sun not playing soccer. You know, so don't get me wrong; I'm not comparing those. But we owe them a big thanks. They proved it can be done, and we all knew that basketball was going to be tougher because it's indoors, and you know you're not masked. It's 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 high contact, 
And we told all of our coaches committees and our student athlete committees in November that if we could figure out basketball, then we will get the rest of you started in spring and we will play all the sports. And we remain committed to that. <coughs> in fact, the, excuse me, the A-Sun has decided that with interruptions in regular seasons and the decision to play strictly divisional play for volleyball and soccer and baseball and softball, that we need to bring eight teams to our tournaments. Traditionally in those sports, we've taken six. And so we've decided that, hey, if you get a game canceled, that's tough, but we didn't want it to affect your ability to play for a conference championship and potentially an NCAA bid. So it has been just a constant evolution of listening, learning, and building plans, activating and implementing them, and then changing them again. But if you have good communication, you listen to the good people that know their stuff, scientists, doctors, and trainers, then I think we've been very fortunate to uh, you know, have very uh, minimal impact on the spread of the virus and been able to return to play for, for many of our sports. So a year like no other. Yeah. How, how has your, the schools been affected? I know uh, football money is pretty big. You know, I'm in SEC country and you know, you know, the, everything is revolves around football first. Of course, in Lexington, it's a little different. But, but nonetheless, how are the schools surviving? Are they doing well? Is, has there been a lot of fear in, in, on that side of things with the COVID stuff? Um, or has everything, for the most part, been able to be handled and, and resolved? Well, I tell you, we've got a really good partner uh, with Gravity Diagnostics. They are in Kentucky and handle all of the Commonwealth's government testing uh, for all of their uh, programs across the state. And they've been really good at providing us uh, affordable uh, PCR testing, which is... Uh, what they call the gold standard. The antigen test is a rapid test, which looks for a protein. And that means that the virus is in your system. But the PCR test has a higher level of accuracy and it will be 24 to 36 hours earlier in detecting the presence of the virus. So it's, it's just a better test. And we've been able to use that, uh, put together a protocol to allow our teams, at least in basketball, the first sport we came back to, to test before they leave campus, make sure they're clean, and then they test again uh, so that we meet the NCAA protocol that they don't play unless they get a clean report. So that's important for two reasons. One, we went to a back-to-back, -back, you play the same team twice at one gym or one arena, that uh, we didn't want to send anybody if you couldn't play because that's wasting the time and, and travel money. So uh, that was a, a good trade off. And then once you get there, we want to play. Uh, so make sure you do everything you're supposed to do. We keep emphasizing with the student athletes that testing does not make you safe. Safe behavior keeps you safe. Now, Vince, you know that. So I'm not, I'm not breaking any news to you, but maybe there was one listener to the podcast that thought testing kept you safe. Said no. You got to be safe. Be safe keeps you safe. It's hard. You know, you think of being college age and it's, I'm, I'm far past that. But uh, to try to tell kids, hey, it's important that you keep to yourself, that, you know, you stick with what we've provided for you here at the school and the safety protocols that we've given to you. It's not easy to keep, you know, 18, 19, 20 year olds from uh, going out and doing things that normal college students do. Uh, how have you seen, uh, I, I guess I'm kind of putting you on the spot, but how have you seen your universities handle that and, and uh, what kind of stuff have been put in place to, to help protect the athletes uh, from themselves to some degree? No, you're absolutely right. And you, you can read stories. Uh, certainly the, the high profile football and basketball teams get headlines when, when they get sick because, you know, some kid went to a party or went to some place that uh, makes big news. Well, you know, use your imagination. It happens to a certain degree on every college campus. And how how well behaved do our uh, student athletes conduct themselves? And we had this discussion before we even put our plans together is that we decided that they are safer on a team uh, than just releasing them and saying, we're not playing, just let them go. Uh, even when we canceled play in the fall, we kept the structure of practice and teams 
and really believe, and I think we've been proven right, not just the A-Sun, but across the country, that being part of a team will keep you safer. Because one, you, you're responsible to your whole team. You know, even if you feel like doing something, hey, you know, take care of your teammates. Be a good teammate. Don't go do that that thing you're looking to do. And it doesn't have to be some party. It could be a wedding or, you know, just a pizza party that you went to with your friends. It's like, no, you, you can't. The advice from Brian Hainline, the chief medical officer of the NCAA, said the only way you're going to get through this season is if you treat everybody outside your tier one group as if they're infected. Hmm. So that attitude, uh, you know, kind of puts a damper on your social activities, but you make a choice. Do you want to play or not? And every student athlete was given the opportunity to opt out and not lose their scholarship. And whether they wanted to do it because they value, you know, going to the pizza party or because they were feared that they'd get sick or whether they're, you know, just felt like it wasn't for them. They wanted to, to opt out. Oh, they're fine. But if you if you stay in, then you're making a commitment to the team. And I really believe and, and uh, I think it was the right call that being on a team keeps you safer. You're much safer on a team than you are just being a student at large. So. We're proud of the decisions we made, and uh, we have four beams in the ASUN, and the first one is students first. Whenever decisions get complicated and and uh, we're going over multiple layers and they say, well, there's another layer to this. This is dynamic. And we stop and say, hey, what would be in the best interest of the students? And for in our case, they're student athletes. And that usually recenters you pretty quick. You say, hey, you know, let's do the best we can Let's make them healthy. Let's let's design a plan to play safely. And then uh, if we can, let's deliver on our promise to provide a quality uh, competitive experience. You talked about earlier the idea of being innovative and you have a reputation yourself as being innovative for the things that you've done, done, you've done, done, in, done in the AA Sun Conference, working a lot in IT and different things like that. Uh, one of the things the ASUN website talks about you is your involvement with getting um, the capabilities for uh, TV and TV deals and things like that going for the ASUN. What kind of goes into preparing the conference for that? Uh, you have your, I believe you have your own network. Is that true? Well, we did. We partnered with ESPN. We were the first conference to have every school be uh, a producer of content that was streamed live on ESPN. At the time, it was ESPN 360. Then it became ESPN 3. And then they developed ESPN Plus. And we've been with them all the way and helping them develop. In fact, the, the technology that they used to launch the SEC network and subsequently the ACC network uh, was really built on our campuses. I mean, Lipscomb in, in Nashville was one of the very first and uh, the best, uh, you know, innovators from ESPN came to those campuses. They built out uh, either a truck or a control room. They tried their new gizmos. They tried the, you know, the computer software instead of the huge decks where you used to control all of the sound and light and all that stuff. And so we were a very willing laboratory for that and uh, again, that's part of part of our DNA. We want to be new. We want to try new things. So uh, I think from that point, what it what it really takes is uh, you don't have to be the person that thinks up all the stuff. You just have to build a culture. It's like, hey, you know what? We'll be better off if we look two to four to six years ahead. And what's going to come new? So if you're uh, you know if you're in charge of our statistics programs. I say, look, I want you to look at the, the very newest thing. Uh, it's not always good to be first because sometimes it's got a lot of bugs. It's not as good or effective, but I want them to know and say, hey, when they get it right, you know, let's let's get out there and use the better product. And when you do that, a lot of times they need some first adapters and uh, we're willing to do that because a lot of times you get a better deal. So like, all right, we'll go in on this. And we're betting with you. We're young and growing. And uh, so we get to make some partnerships that way. So it really is just about being uh, consciously aware of, you know, what's your what's your area and what's coming? What can we do next? And so uh, we try to stay connected and, and, and do that. So 
uh, it is gratifying when you hit a win. Uh, we don't publicize the misses, you know, I said, Hey, we took a swing and miss at that. Uh, but when you get one and you win, it, it is pretty cool. Speaking of winning, you also have a, a long history in the conference of very successful, not only programs, but players. Uh, looks like a very strong baseball history. Chris Sale, Corey Kluber, uh, several others uh, as well. Sam Mitchell, basketball, came through the A-Sun. Uh, looks volleyball and softball, very strong programs as well. You talked about football kind of as a future plan. How do you build off of the strength of the programs that you've had in these other sports? Well, I think one thing we try to do is, again, stay connected and use the advantages you have. You know, so if people know who Scotty Pippen is and you said, oh, you know, he went to Central Arkansas, right? And they're like, no, I didn't know that. I said, yeah, they're in the A-Sun and he went to Central Arkansas. Make that connection. Don't be afraid of it. Now, is Scotty Pippen going to be in the A-Sun Hall of Fame? No. But uh, it's like Artis Gilmore, who's a Hall of Famer, I think, ABA and NBA, you know, as well as Jacksonville University and probably Gardner Webb, which was a junior college when he went there. Uh, we used to call it the artist Gilmore game when Gardner Webb was in our league and played Jacksonville. He, he, you know, led both of those teams to the best years they've ever had. And uh, so he, he's someone that is very well recognized and, you know, we love to interview him and he does radio for Jacksonville that there's those types of people from every campus and, you know, we've got Olympians like uh, Brooke Young, uh, shoot, Brooke Sweat Youngquist. Uh, she's an Olympian. She's a beach volleyball player. We didn't even have beach when she was at FGCU. And uh, so she's a volleyball player in the A-Sun Hall of Fame, but a beach volleyball player for the, for the national team and been in the Olympics. Those things are really cool. So, uh, yeah, if the story is uh, Corey Kluber and uh, – Chris Sale, you know, are playing each other in a playoff game or something like that, and they both are uh, former All A Sun pitchers. Uh, we love to push that forward, and and you ride the horse, you know. If you got a if you got a winner, ride it. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. Definitely nothing wrong with that at all. Uh, that's what I'm doing today with Ted Gumbert. I'm I'm riding that horse right now. Uh, <laughs> we appreciate uh, Ted being on with us again. He is the commissioner of the ASUN Conference, has been the commissioner since 2007, but been in the conference or associated with the conference for almost 30 years now. And what's the, the next step? So you, you talked about football, obviously, as, as, as big, big picture plans and things like that. But now that we're kind of winding, getting into the spring, um, getting ready to do basketball tournament and stuff like that, are there, what kind of, I don't know if concerns is even the right word for it anymore, but when you're looking at getting teams into the, the tournament, tournament's going to be located in one one general area in the Indianapolis area this year. What kind of stuff are you preparing your universities for uh, when it comes to like the, the the March Madness tournament and things like that? Well, I'll tell you, Vince. Number one, uh, that's what we've been talking about since they canceled it last year because yeah. that really is the premier event. We think it's one of the greatest sporting events in the world, and uh, it really is where the NCAA hangs its hat, you know, that March madness. And when we couldn't do it, I don't think anybody in hindsight uh, feels it was the wrong decision, but it's like, man, we got to do everything we can to be able to play next time around. And, you know, we can't be shy about the fact that there is a financial component to this. You know, if you try to deny that, say, no, it's all about the kids and giving them an opportunity. That's all. I was like, come on. This is the lifeblood of the NCAA. And, uh, you know what? They get nine hundred million dollars and uh, three hundred of it funds the, the association and six hundred gets distributed to the members, you know, from the SEC on down to everybody. We all get a piece of that pie. So. Uh, when someone says, you know, it's about money. Well, yes, there are financial consequences to things, but none of these issues are single, uh, you know, one issue decisions. But, you know, when people say like, well, you know, it's all about the money. It says, well, money is part of the equation. We will spend more to conduct the basketball tournament than we'd probably spend for to conduct something else. There's a, there's a cost benefit analysis. So, uh, but the, the players that didn't play last year 
that were denied that chance, you go interview any one of them. Tell them if they would like the chance to play in that event. For many of them, that is the highlight of their athletic career. And that's the deal we made with them to provide that opportunity. So from the beginning of the year, when you're working in the weight room and you're doing that extra rep and you're saying, come on, we got to, you know, you got to be strong. You got to be strong. It's going to be those free throws at the, you know, in overtime that make the difference and we're going to be ready. Uh, we do owe it to them to make every effort to provide the competitive opportunity we promised them. And then uh, the other part is we want to be safe. Uh, we certainly don't want to just say, hey, you know, that's the way it goes. If you want to play, play. If you don't, don't. Uh, so there have been uh, great detail planning. And Dan Gavitt at the NCAA office, yeah. who's the vice president for basketball, uh, I can tell you every day this is all he's been working on. And uh, a year later, if we get to April 5th and have a championship game, uh Wow, what a great celebration that will be. And again, back to my three football commissioners that I want to thank. They showed that you can do it. And that actual incident of transmission during competition was very low. It's it's mostly those things you talked about. You know, somebody went home and, and went to the baby shower. You know, and I'm like, okay, well, you walked around with 15 unprotected, unmasked people and you got sick. And then you brought it back to campus. So We've got protocols. We've got the the right testing. We've got the right uh, isolation. We know how to contact trace. All of those things that I didn't even know what they were a year ago. Right. And, uh, so I feel confident that we're we've struck a balance between uh, certainly the financial issues, which fund all the rest of our programs, the uh, safety issues, and the desire for our student athletes to compete. Uh, that those are all parts of the equation and uh, nothing's easy. If it was easy, we'd all agree and everybody be all in. The fact that you have differences of opinion is what makes it really cool. We, we, we welcome other opinions and not everyone will do the same thing. Uh, different parts of the country have different uh, surge of the virus. Different parts of the country have different challenges in their ho uh, hospital capacities and, uh, you know, hey, it's it's not a simple equation. And uh, we do get a little worn out from time to time. And that's when we say, you know, hey, go do whatever's best for you. You know, have that cup of hot tea and, you know, go get your nails done, you know. Or if you was like, well, I can't go out to a place to get my nails done. I was like, all right, well, take a hot shower, you know, take a shower for an hour, whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. For me, it's like, hey, strum a few chords, you know, and just get there. Okay, yeah, I feel better now, you know. So uh, it's not easy, but we, we talk in our office about, hey, the bigger the hill uh, or the bigger the mountain, the, the more satisfying it is when you get to see the view from the top. So this this basketball tournament is our is our mountain. Definitely. Now, last year, you know, I, the thing I always think back to is, of course, in March last year, we had no clue what was ahead of us. Nobody had any idea what was happening. Um, and you think back, man, the, the, the high school seniors that missed out on playing in their tournaments here in Kentucky, they canceled the high school tournaments, basketball tournaments. And of course the NCAA canceled the tournament there as well. And, and most conference tournaments didn't get played. What was that, uh, those few days when they were trying to figure out to play the conference or not play the conference, what was kind of that process um, that you guys had to deal with to, to make the call for for your conference? And what what input did you have with the rest of the tournament as well? Hey, it was very disjointed. It was very disconcerting. Uh, we were either in a because uh, we use the, the uh, digital conferencing before, you know, Zoom and everything became the way you do business. We use that stuff already in our conference. And so we started having those and then contacting others. And it was a search for information. Uh, so for a couple of days, you know, we're checking, you know, hey, what's going on? Is your school open? Is your gym open? And what are you doing? And uh, because our tournament was higher seed hosts, you know, one round's on a Tuesday and the next round's on a Thursday and the next round's on a Sunday that uh, we were in the middle of it. And as it turned out, we got the men's final played 
We got the women's semifinal played. And then, you know, we had a couple days off. And that's when everything broke loose. Everybody started canceling. And, you know, when the NBA had the problems and then the NHL and you're like, wow, I guess, you know, we better we better pay attention here. This is not just a local issue that uh, most conference started pulling the plug. They pulled people off the floor. You know, I know in some conferences they, they stopped the game at halftime, said we're done. That's it. And uh, because our game wasn't for two days, we were just kind of sitting and people criticized us, you know, like, well, why didn't you cancel? How about come in? I said, hey, we've talked to our schools. They know it's on hold. We don't have to make a decision till tomorrow. And one of our, you know, guiding criteria in such a thing is don't make a decision until you have to. Uh, so we hung tight for another day. And then, you know, then we pulled the plug on our final and people said, well, what took you so long? And hey, you've got to be willing to understand that the public is always going to have uh, their opinion and they, they deserve to. But the people on the inside generally have more information and, you know, I like to think it, that we do know what we're doing. Uh, you know, I didn't call any doctor's offices and I didn't call any, uh, you know, production facilities or car dealerships and tell them whether they should be open or not. But, uh, you know, sports, that's the way it is. Everybody's an expert and everybody knows more than the coach. And, you know, coach, why'd you do that? Ah. Well, here's 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 the thing. And you, we'll we'll break it right here on uh, sports stove. The coach knows some things that you don't know. <laughs> what? <laughs> so they're working with more information than you have. Uh, so just like an author of a poem or a, a, a novel, the, the person who created it knows what they're doing. Uh, it's always easy to critique something, but, uh, you know, generally the coaches know a little bit more than the fans. Doesn't mean it's not fun. I mean, I love going to games when I have no connection. And uh, yeah, I, I'll yell at the players and, and uh, try to be encouraging because I know how uh, it's better to root for something in my book. You know, don't root against somebody. Let them do what they do. But, you know, cheer your guys on. So I'm the only guy up in the stands that when the umpire makes a great call, I'm like, way to go, Blue, you rock. <laughs> and I have to correct. Well, not a correction, but just a clarification. He said, I'm almost 30 years of the conference. It, it all started when I had I was seven and had an internship. So now that I'm 37, uh, you know, it's been a good run, really good run. <laughs> uh, you've talked about already the connection with ESPN. Many of the games air on ESPN Plus and uh, on the ESPN Networks as well. What are some other ways that people can stay connected with the ASUN conference? Well, you know, we – are the top ranked uh, social media connection uh, conference in what's called division one subdivision, you know, the, the one triple a no football. Well, now that we're starting football, we got to run up and be number one in FCS uh, and having football will give us the platform to do that. I fully expect that as we get into it, we're going to work our way up the standings and uh, I don't expect to go to one in a week, but uh, we will build a plan and we will get there. But social media, whether it's the Instagram or Twitter or uh, some of the other things that I don't even know what they are. I call them all collectively. It's Instabot. And I don't even know what they are. They put me on the video or uh, the pictures or the audio. Uh, but we do a lot of YouTube, uh, a lot of interview shows. Uh, we record from time to time something called TED Talks about because somebody had TED Talks. So yeah, we used TED Talks about. And uh, we did one of those the other day. But mm -hmm. our team, again, we asked them, I said, go figure out what the next thing is and be there. So uh, they are, they design the, the type of graphics and messaging that the young people want to see. We know our in-person audience uh, depends upon your local demographics and what kind of folks are in the area. So FGCU, a big retirement community, there's going to be an older average crowd there than perhaps some of the other conference uh, campuses. But when we decided about our communication strategies from the conference and how we're going to structure our media plan, 
we wanted to tailor it to uh, younger, not just student athletes, but students in general, because the schools benefit when younger people know who we are. So if they say, oh, I've heard of Kennesaw State, yeah, I know about them. Uh, or I've heard of Lipscomb, you know, that's a good school. They got a nice music school or North Alabama, which uh, we're actually partnering. We're doing, we're going <laughs> to record a single and uh, the UNA uh, music department is going to produce it uh, over there in Muscle Shoals, the Singing River. Uh, if you've ever seen the documentary Muscle Shoals, it talks about Rick Hall and the fame studio. So there's good reasons to know all of our schools. I mean, FGCU, obviously, first 15 to ever make the Sweet 16. Uh, awesome story. We're still riding it. But uh, <laughs> so that social media is really big for us. And uh, we want to be good at it. Uh, as you can see, I got a pop up behind me. They have me do stuff all the time. And, and just making news that causes Vince Stover to want to have me on, uh, you know it's big. Definitely, definitely. Ted Gumbert is the commissioner of the ASUN Conference. I sure appreciate you being on with us today. Your openness as well in conversation has been very refreshing. And so I appreciate that. Not a whole lot of uh, just cliches and things like that. So I greatly appreciate uh, the openness of your conversation as well. Congratulations on adding three new schools to the program. We'll keep an eye on it for sure as football starts coming around uh, again. And in the basketball season right now, the teams that you've got in the conference uh, are putting on quite a show right now as well. Lots of entertaining sports through the ASUN and other obviously uh, welcomed um, universities that offer a lot of other things as well. You mentioned Lipscomb. I grew up just south of Nashville. I uh, knew about Lipscomb my whole life and and uh, now being just down the road from EKU, uh, it started popping up all over the place uh, You know, here this past weekend uh, about EKU. Uh, joining the A Sun and and uh, there's a lot of excitement and I you've mentioned it a few times already but anybody that I've talked to here the last couple of days um, about this interview they've all said the same thing it's all been about EKU football and uh, when can it get back to what it once was and they really feel like there's potential for that to be the case by being a part of the A Sun and the opportunity that they get uh, being a part of your conference. Well, we we think so too and. They have a vision, they have the commitment, and the local folks, uh, they love the Colonels. So they will come out and uh, here, I'll break something for you on, on Sports Stove if you promise to have me back another time. Okay. All right. Uh, one of the things I'm working on with, with, with the music is I got to get a little theme song for A Sun Game Day because we're going to build a little show called A Sun Game Day and we'll do it as a football, you know, probably studio show. But I got a friend in Nashville, and he's a professional musician, and he also runs a studio, and so he's going to help. But we're going to we're going to build a little game day song, and once we debut the game day show, uh, the goal ultimately is to take it on the road. And if we can build it and get it mobile, we're going to take it to Richmond first. So look out, we're coming, and uh, we'll have to pick a big game, maybe a homecoming or something when. Uh, We've got a huge crowd, and we'll we'll bring our game day. Uh, we'll set up and have a big party. So I hope you'll be part of that. Definitely, man. It's exciting. A lot of good things happening in the A Sun right now, and uh, definitely, I, you know, just just over the last several days, preparing for you coming on, looking through your website, looking through the social media stuff, and everything. Uh, everything seems to be top notch. So you guys are doing a great job. And again, you have a reputation. Uh, any anybody that says anything about you that I've seen at least has all been positive. Uh, so congratulations on everything that you're doing and uh, good luck moving forward. Hey, thank you, Vince. And, uh, you know, it's like anything else. You got to have teammates. You can't do anything by yourself in, 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 in our industry. So we love to have good teammates and we love to we love to play. And uh, it's kind of fun when you win sometimes, too. <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Ted Gumbert, thank you so much for being on with us today. You got it. My pleasure.